Hi, I'm Dr. Sheshikan, Senior Interventional Cardiologist and Head of Department of Cardiology and Director of Cardiac Cath Lab at Yashoda Hospital, Secunderabad. Today we are going to talk about intravascular ultrasound that is called IVAS in short form. And IVAS is an important tool in our armamentarium today for assessing the severity of coronary lesions and guiding the treatment for coronary artery disease. Today, everybody is preferring stents when compared to a bypass surgery. Coronary angiogram, we all know, is a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional structure, so there are a lot of limitations. And to guide a treatment and to give a better short-term and long-term outcomes, today we are using IVAS as an imaging tool to look at the coronary arteries better than what we see in an angiogram. This is the IVAS catheter, which is a three French catheter, which is introduced over a guide wire while doing an angiogram to evaluate the coronary artery in much more detail than what is seen by an angiogram. IVAS or intravascular ultrasound is used to assess ambiguous lesions or lesions with intermediate severity, which is in the range of 50 to 70 percent, which are difficult to assess. Also, it is a very important modality to study the plaque or blockage morphology and structure. It could be a cholesterol lipid laden plaque. It could be a fibrous plaque or a calcific plaque. Now, this helps us to guide the treatment strategies of how to plan for a coronary intervention. Should you put just do a balloon angioplasty? Should you put a stent? Or do we need something to modify the calcium in the blood vessels so that we get a better stent implantation? Not only that, it is also important to tell us about the right size of the stent, the right length of the stent. Also, once the stent is put into the vessel, the stent expansion is very important for a better short-term and long-term implications. Both the cardiovascular morbidity and mortality and the long-term outcomes are extremely good when an angioplasty is guided with an intravascular ultrasound. Post-procedure, again, some complications happening, like one of the inner layers of the blood vessels having a dissection, leading to a complication in the short term, or a situation wherein the stent is not fully expanded. These situations can be better understood, better treated, if we use an intravascular ultrasound as an important tool. Post procedure, again, in the long term, sometimes reblockages do happen and the vessels can re stenose or reblock. In that situation, the reasons for stent failure can be very properly assessed if we have an intravascular imaging like IVAS or OCT to study the reasons for the stent failure. Not only that, in patients with renal failure who have a kidney failure, wherein there are limitations of contrast injections and contrast volume limitations, intravascular ultrasound is a very, very good tool to limit the contrast volume so that we can prevent, avoid kidney failure in these patients. In addition to that, the hard endpoints in the long term are very good if an intravascular ultrasound is used for angioplasty guidance. Thank you. Like, comment and subscribe for more health updates.